Hey everyone, welcome back to GearFest 2023. I'm Jason, I don't wanna go home. Sweetwater, find me an apartment here or something and I will work for you for free, Maze. That was a terrible intro. That was. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, t no, we're keeping that. And I'm Tia, I do nothing for free, Bailey. <laughs> and I'm Max Ravitz, no middle name, and I'm just gonna be showing off some of our Moog products today. Yeah, so I know we're a guitar heavy channel, but Tia and I thought it would be really cool, especially for our audience to dive into modular synths because admittedly, while I do play synths, I haven't dabbled into the modular world because uh, it's quite scary to me and I don't like things that scare me. So could you explain what a modular synth does and what makes it different from uh, like a regular synth? Yeah, so synthesis started out as modular synthesizers and then they were converted into sort of what is commonly known as a synthesizer with a keyboard and the control scheme. Um, but the nice thing about a modular synthesizer is that it's an instrument that you can design around your own practice and if you're buying a hardwired synthesizer, you know, you're paying money for functions that maybe you're not going to use and the manufacturer is making all the decisions around how it works so you have to adapt your musical practice to their decisions. And with a modular synthesizer what's nice is you can choose every component that goes into it and design it to work around your practice and not have to adapt your practice to someone else's decisions. So it's just a really nice flexible way to approach synthesis, especially because you can choose, you know, I like this particular manufacturer's oscillator or this particular manufacturer's filter or this delay and then group them all together. And if later you decide, you know what, I actually don't love this filter that much, then you can remove it and put something else in. So it just offers a lot of advantages for catering the instrument to your needs in a nice way. Damn, I feel smarter already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess with that out of the way, let's just jump into the sounds. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, what we're gonna be talking about today is our 60 HP line of instruments. And when I say 60 HP, that's actually a width measurement that's used in Eurorack. So this is 60 HP wide, which stands for horizontal pitch. For people who are uninitiated with modular synthesis, these are a nice entry point because they are what's called semi-modular. So by default, you don't have to do any patching to get sound out of it. Whereas on a modular synth, you have to patch just to get a signal. So these allow you to familiarize yourself with how they work separate from patching. And then once you are familiar with the way that they function, you can start using patching to change that functionality or expand the functionality. Or if you have them sitting in a Eurorack case, like say the Mother 32, which is structured with a single oscillator, a filter, an envelope, uh, a VCA, and an LFO. But if I wanted to make it a two oscillator synth, I could put this in a case, buy an, uh, an oscillator module, and then just patch it to the external input and mix it, and then I get a two oscillator synth. Or I can add filters or extra modulation, all sorts of fun things. And so with our Trinity series, this is designed around the idea that they'll all serve different musical purposes. So we have the DFAM, which is called Drummer from Another Mother, and it's designed around uh, percussion and drum synthesis. And then we have the Subharmonicon, which is sort of inspired by two kind of esoteric, very old synthesizers, one called the Mixter Troutonium, and another one called the Rhythmicon, which is something that was invented by Leon Theremin, who also invented the Theremin. And then the Mother 32 is just designed to be a very straightforward synthesizer voice that gives you a classic subtractive structure, which is what Moog sort of came up with back in the day, is the idea of subtractive synthesis, which a lot of synthesizers use nowadays. So we can go through and listen to the way that each one works. Actually, before you start, oh, yeah. can, can I say this? Yeah. Can I say it's Moogan time? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, so I'm gonna just unpatch it so we can listen to kind of the default behavior on this. Okay. So yeah, this is how I'm going to make the drums in the particular example that we're gonna be you know, working with today. So what we have is two rows of sequencing and the bottom row is just aimed at controlling velocity. So if I turn it all the way down, I won't hear anything. And if I were to turn them all the way up, I'm just gonna hear a steady pulse all the way through. And the oscillator's tuned very low right now, so we just hear this like deep rumbling bass sound. 
But yeah, if I wanted to make kind of like a classic house music or techno music beat that's more four on the floor, then I can get these nice velocities where on the you know quarter note beat I have a kick drum with full velocity, but then I can make these kind of gentler notes that have lower dynamics. Yeah, kind of like a, like a grace note. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so what I'm going to do is there are three envelopes on DFAM. One that just is designed to work with the oscillators, one that's just working with a filter, and one that's just working with the VCA or the volume of your signal. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the envelope for the oscillators and I'm going to add it to modulate the pitch. And then what I'm able to do is simulate what happens with a kick drum where the beater is pushing on the membrane and creating this pitch modulation that then resonates. So yeah, you can hear just that one oscillator is now my kick drum. I have a filter that allows me to just remove some of those dynamics. And I actually have the velocity row output going to control the filter level so that on those notes that have strong velocity, I can also make them brighter. And now what I can do is I can take this top row that's designed to control the pitch of the oscillators, which you can hear if I flip this switch here to control both oscillators and I say remove that envelope. I can start just getting melodic pitch control of the oscillators. And there's a second oscillator we're not listening to and you can also make the sequencer just control the second oscillator, which right now is doing something kind of crazy. So there's all sorts of things that you can do. What I'm actually going to do is use that top row to control the noise level, which there's a noise signal that can be on the whole time, but we also have voltage control over it. So I'm going to say that this top row, the knob positions, are going to be the noise level. So whatever this is set to is pretty much what this knob will be set to at a particular step. So if I want to cheat getting a snare drum, now I can make it so just that fifth step that has full dynamics is going to add noise and I can control how you know, dramatic that noise addition is. And then the last thing that I'm going to do uh, on the DFAM is actually take a trigger signal that's coming out of the subharmonicon, just giving it a rhythm that's actually following what's happening on this bottom sequencer here. And I'm going to run it down into the Model 32, into this thing that essentially will allow me to mix two signals. But if I only put a signal on one side of it, it's like a strength control or attenuator for that signal. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to turn the knob all the way down, and I'm going to plug it into the VCA CV, which is just controlling the overall volume. What it's going to allow me to do is feed this quick trigger into the VCA, so I'll hear like a click or a pop that uh, can be used sort of like a rim shot, hi-hat kind of sound within this drum pattern. And so it's interesting because with a drum machine, you know, you have discrete channels for every single drum sound. Since this is just a one voice synthesizer, you can use the modulation and patching to simulate a drum machine, even though it's just a single voice. And the way that we're doing that is just by controlling the levels on a per step basis to simulate other sounds. So it's kind of a heady approach to drum machines in a more, you know, synthesis-based zone. So that's the DFAM. And now the Subharmonicon is next, and this one is pretty heady. The design of this is meant to allow people to add chords because traditionally Moog instruments are monophonic, so they just have one voice. This is using what's called paraphony, which back in the day with synthesis was a way to cheat polyphony without adding so many components. Because a proper polyphonic synthesizer, say the Mother 32 was eight voices, every voice would have all of the components. So every voice would have an oscillator, an LFO, a filter, an amplifier, an envelope. So you would have eight of them, and that inevitably makes the product more expensive. Mm -hmm. So uh, back in the day, what they decided was a way to give you four oscillators, but all of those oscillators share a single filter and amplifier path. So you could get chords, but you wouldn't get the same dynamics of a polysynth where the notes overlap. Mm -hmm. They all kind of are contained within one voice path. And the subharmonicon works that way. 
And so what we have is two master oscillators, and then there are sub oscillators that are able to generate a division, a frequency division of this pitch. So if this is, say, like an A440, I could go divide by 2 to like 220, divide by 3, divide by 4, all the way down to divide by 16. And so if I just start adding different pitches, what I'm able to do is generate this chordal pattern. I have the other oscillator tuned to fifth higher, and then its sub oscillators are at different divisions. this works is you have two sequencers and the two sequencers are driven by rhythms that function the same way these sub oscillators do so I can take the tempo knob and then I can get four divisions of the tempo knob oh damn so because it's synced in you can see that this is the tempo that I'm running at so I can like look at the DFAM and see you know the, the fastest tempo that I can hit and if I turned rhythm one all the way up now you can see I can get this sequencer to run at the same pace as that. But then I can divide them into slower divisions. And so what I'm doing is I'm dividing it all the way down so the DFAM will run through two cycles before it moves to the next step. But because the subharmonicon is paraphonic, it means that any time either sequencer moves, I'll hear all six voices get activated. So even though I'm not using the second sequencer to control any pitches, what I can do is add three different rhythms to control sequencer two just to build this rhythmic pattern for the way that my chords get triggered. And then I have an envelope that lets me open the filter at that rhythm and I can kind of play with, you know, the volume uh, shape that I get as it moves. And so then if we add the DFAM back in, now I can get this nice slow chordal pattern that also gives me these nice like rhythmic hits yeah. and interactions with the DFAM. So that's the subharmonicon. And this is definitely something that, you know, you can spend a lot of time exploring and find all these kind of nooks and crannies because it's a very you know, unique in its operation. And there's not any synthesizers <laughs> currently on the market that work the same way that this does. And so the last one we have here is a Mother 32. And this is set up to work very much like a traditional subtractive synthesizer where I have a single oscillator and I'll open the filter all the way up. So I can set the oscillator to be a sawtooth or a square wave. And then I can also modulate the pulse width to get this kind of thick tone from the oscillator. I can also use the modulation to modulate the frequency and get things like vibrato. But I'm just going to leave the pulse width on. Then I have a filter that can be configured as a low pass filter or a high pass filter. And what I mean by that is a low pass filter is going to remove upper frequencies from your signal and essentially make it a little bit more dull sounding and you just get to listen to the rumbly low stuff. And as you open it, it allows more of those frequencies to pass to give you a brighter signal. The high pass does the opposite where at the bottom of its range, it lets all the signals through and then as you turn it up, it starts cutting out the low end. So you just hear all the bright stuff on the top. And then I have a resonance control, which works to kind of accentuate the point at which the filter is removing frequencies. So you can get something that starts sounding almost like a pitch or a tone. And I can also feed noise in there. And if I wanted to, I could just patch the keyboard output from the sequencer to control the filter and use that as another sound source oh. if I want to get creative. So then the Filter can also be modulated by the envelope or the LFO. So right now I just have the envelope 
opening the filter, I can also make the envelope close the filter. Or I can set it to have the LFO control it in either way and invert the phase of that stuff. And then I have a really simple envelope that's just attack and decay. And I can turn on a sustain period, so if you control it with a keyboard and you hold a note, you can make it sustain if you want to as well. And then there's just a bunch of different modular utilities, like this mixer that we're using for the hi-hat sound here. And this is another nice aspect of modular, is, you know, with these together, this function is on the Mother 32, but I can feed a signal from the subharmonicon into that feature on the Mother 32 and then feed it to the DFAM. So you can start, like, bootstrapping other functions that aren't on the synth to a different synth if you want to. I mean, um, we normally don't like bootstraps, but... Yeah, uh... yeah, I mean, yeah, yes. yeah, maybe not the right phrase for that, but... Yeah. <laughs> you can adapt it or, you know, steal yeah. it from yeah. that. And so the last thing that we're going to be focusing on is the Model D. So this is a reissue of our classic synthesizer. Um, this particular one is a Sweetwater exclusive that's made out of mahogany. That is mahogany! Oh. Um, and there's 250 of these getting made. But the basic model is made out of Appalachian cherry that we source locally from around Asheville. And so what I'm doing here is I'm actually using the sequencer on the Mother 32 to control the Minimoog Model D. So I can take the gate signals that trigger the envelopes and the keyboard signals that control the pitch and just use it to control the pitch of this. Be able to use it to essentially just integrate this in and control it. But you don't necessarily have as much control as you would on a modular. But you can control the pitch, you can control the, the gate. And then I actually have the second sequencer on the subharmonicon controlling the cutoff frequency so I can kind of animate the filter. And this one is somewhat similar to the Mother 32, except you have more of everything, kind of. You have three oscillators instead of just one. And the third oscillator can be used as an LFO to modulate things if you want. But the nice thing is it's also an LFO that will track the keyboard so you can get vibrato that's slow at the bottom of the keyboard or fast at the top of the keyboard. And then you have a noise source that you can add in in the mixer that can be switched between pink noise and white noise. The mixer is unique in that if you drive a signal past noon, it starts to sort of clip and add color to the signal. So if you want a clean signal, you just leave the mixer levels around noon, and then beyond that, you'll start getting a slightly more driven character. And then this only has two waveforms on its oscillator, whereas we have six waveforms that we can choose between, and they can be chosen on a per oscillator basis. So there's all sorts of interesting ways that they can be mixed. You can set them at different octaves from each other, detune them from each other to create intervals, all sorts of fun stuff that you associate with synthesizers because this is kind of one of the ones that started it. So a lot of these functions are imitated on others. So then, yeah, once I add subharmonicon back in, I'm actually using the pitch from here to modulate this pitch. So you can hear the auto bass line kind of like following with the chordal pattern. And then, yeah, I add the D fan back in. This is gonna be on my mixtape. Yeah. Oh my god, this is on my wish list. Yeah. I was saying the beat, it's gonna oh, be yeah. on my mixtape. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was, you know, a pretty rapid fire, you know, run through all of this stuff because it's definitely something that you can sit with and, you know, grow with for years and years. And especially the way that you can kind of transform these into other things and expand them by adding different modular components. Um, it's just a world that, yeah, you can really go deep with. It seems very easy to just get lost in it for like hours yes. at a time. Yes. This is excellent. Thank you so much for yeah, explaining so this. Like Thank this you. is, oh my God, this is so much less uh, less frightening. Yeah. <laughs> like well, yeah. you've really made this like uh, it, like accessible. Yeah. Like thank yeah. you. Uh, you know, I think a, a lot of the 
intimidation with modulars, you know, all the spaghetti, and just like visually it looks intimidating. Mm. But if you have a familiarity with synthesis, then a lot of the stuff in modular is a just very straightforward application, but you have access to all the little things versus something like this, where some of the decisions in terms of how it's arranged were made for you. Mm -hmm. But this is interesting because the Minimoog Model D was based on um, the modulars that we made, which are very big 5U modulars, which mm -hmm. is a different format than your rack. And they would bring artists in to work on that stuff and just found that there was a consistent way that all those artists would patch the instruments. So then the idea of the Minimoog came of just making that patch permanent. So it was inspired by a lot of the artists that Bob Moog would work with back in the day and what they would do with the modular synths and then just making it into a little more, you know, accessible package that you could travel with. Sweet. Well, thank you. Uh, I think this is where we're going to have to wrap it up. Yeah. But dude, thank you. Like, I, like I said, I was scared of modular synth. Now I want to explore. But if you want to explore, you can use our affiliate link and get some of this stuff by Sweetwater. Yeah, but be sure to send it to us first. Yes, yes. We have so to we test it, it, make sure it works, yeah. you know, yeah. for a couple, couple years and then you'll get it. Yeah. yeah, so thanks for checking us out. This is still GearFest 2023. We are Working Class Music and uh, we'll talk to you later. Yeah, adios. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day.